Today we're at the Canopy Challenge Course at Fall Creek Falls State Park in the great state of Tennessee. And we're talking about challenge course inspections that you might need and who the right people are to perform them. And that starts right now. Hello everyone, Don Stock here with another challenge course pro tip powered by the Adventure Guild, where our goal is to help you build a better, safer, and more professional challenge course program. Today, let's talk about challenge course inspections. For some of you, course and gear inspections may be very familiar. Others of you may just be thinking about adding a course to your camp or existing attraction and are researching the things that you need to know. And now, wherever you may fall on that spectrum, it's important to understand the role of inspections, how they differ, and which ones you need or may not need depending upon your circumstance. Over the past decade, the aerial adventure industry has professionalized a great deal and both regulation and scrutiny has increased significantly for challenge courses even at places like camps and retreat centers. For many years, um, annual professional inspections by qualified personnel have been required by industry standards such as those established by the Association for Challenge Course Technology or the ACCT and more recently by ASTM and the PRCA. However, more and more state and local regulatory bodies are establishing requirements for challenge course inspections, um, permitting, and most of those are based on the application or one or more of these standards. Now the inspections that you need to be familiar with fall into five basic categories. Number one is the inspection by personnel that's employed by the local governing body, often referred to as the authority having jurisdiction. Now, depending upon where your course is located, you may or may not need this type of inspection. States and locales vary widely in what they require. Some do not regulate challenge courses at places like camps, but do inspect commercial operations such as zipline tours or aerial adventure courses that are open to the public. Others may inspect and permit both, or they may do neither. Some states, like Florida, have their own state inspectors. Other places, like here in Tennessee where we are today, the state permitting process accepts inspections by private credentialed inspectors who submit their reports to the state for their permitting process. What's important is that you know what your AHJ requires and you follow these guidelines. I've linked a regulatory map below that will allow you to search your area's requirements for this type of inspection. Via this map, you should also be able to get the information you need regarding uh, what standards your AHJ accepts. The second type of inspection that you may need, depending upon your course and of course upon your circumstances, are what I call special inspections. They include inspections by professionals such as engineers who may need to sign off on the plans that your builder is using to build your course, or they might need to assess the structural viability of something such as an existing building or tower that you want to use as part of your course. Or another type of engineer may need to assess the soil conditions at the site where you plan to put your course. Or if you have trees or plan to use trees as part of your course, you will likely need an arborist or a forester to assess the trees, assess the viability and health of those trees, before the build and then regularly afterwards on an ongoing basis to make sure that they remain viable for that use. So these are special inspections. The third type of inspection that you need to be aware of is what's called an acceptance inspection. And an acceptance inspection is one that's done after the completion of a new construction project or a major modification of an existing course. Um, it's done by a competent person as defined by the applicable standard and usually is done by an employee or the owner of the installation company. If you have a new course built or a major modification done to your existing course, your installation company should provide you with an acceptance inspection report as part of the overall commissioning packet that you receive once the project is done. And this is stating that the course is ready for use and the builder hands it off to you for operations. If you don't receive this packet of information, be sure to ask for it. These documents are an important part of your risk management plan and provide documentation that you will need um, that your course and equipment meet the applicable standards and are ready to be put into use. The fourth type of inspection that's required is the one that people are most familiar with, and that is the annual professional inspection. All three standards that I mentioned above require, at minimum, an annual inspection of courses and equipment by a qualified professional. 
It should be noted that a governing body or the designer of a course may require a shorter period of time between professional inspections. You'll just need to check with your regulatory body and with your course builder to verify. Now, it's important to keep in mind that these inspections must be done by a person outside the organization who owns the course, and they must be insured and qualified to do this. This is typically someone who is a certified inspector or is vetted and employed by an accredited challenge course company. Um, this outside professional inspection is also required by most companies who provide general liability insurance for the course operations, the people who insure the course program. So you will need to establish a good relationship with a person or a company who can provide these in professional inspection services. Um, they should be someone you trust. They should be someone that you enjoy working with. And don't be afraid to ask for references. Don't be afraid to ask for credentials. The fifth and final type of inspection is what's often referred to as the in-house inspections or series of inspections. And unlike the others that we mentioned, these inspections are performed by a competent, knowledgeable person within the organization that owns or operates the course. To view our video on the who, how, and what of in-house inspections, click the link above right now or in the description below and we'll give you all of that information. Now these in-house inspections include things like pre-use daily inspections as well as monthly or quarterly inspections. The purpose of these inspections is to monitor the ongoing condition of the course and of the equipment to make sure that we catch any damage or any deteriorating conditions that may develop in between your periodic professional inspections. So as a course owner or someone who is looking to have a course built, it's important that you do your homework regarding the inspections that you're going to need in order to be compliant with your regulatory bodies and with the applicable industry standard for your area. As always, if you have questions regarding course inspections or any other challenge course related topic, please leave them below. We'll be answering those questions and we also use those frequently asked questions as subjects for future challenge course pro tips videos. I'll see you next time.